In this video, I'm going to explain to you why I have to redo my motorcycle test um, and I'm going to go through the motorcycle licensing laws in the UK as of 2023 July filming this video. Now, those of you who've been watching the channel for a couple of years will know that I took my A2 license when I turned 19 years old, which was now two years ago to this date that I passed my Mod 2, which is a second part of the motorcycle test. So now that it has been two years for me, I can now go ahead and take my A license, which is my full motorcycle license. So I'm gonna go through the exact steps from stage one of how you can pass your motorcycle license regardless of what age you are and what age you can do each license. So let me go into that for you now. This video is sponsored by Bikeshore. Bikeshore ensure you as an individual. They take into account your personal needs and no matter how wacky your bike is, how standard it is, whether it's heavily modified, whether it's a classic, they can find a policy for you. Um, and if you've got some unusual circumstances that you're finding it tricky with other insurers, then they can get a quote for that as well. So click the link in the description and head to Bike Shore's website and you can get a quote, maybe it's for your first bike or your due renewal, um, and get a quote within minutes. So the rules and regulations I'm going to be o going over in this video apply to the UK. So if you do live in another part of Europe, then the rules might be slightly different, but as a whole, they're pretty similar. And if you live in America, well, lucky you. Um, so at 16 years of age, you can go and do your CBT, which is compulsory basic training. That allows you to ride a 50cc motorcycle or moped, which can't go any more than 45 kilometers per hour, which is 28 miles per hour, which in my eyes is completely dangerous because you can't keep up with any traffic and you might as well be on a bicycle because you've got a racing bicycle. You can go quicker than that. Um, so that's a stupid rule. Uh, but anyway, that's how it is. Uh, that's what I did and I got a 50cc and you get um, a lot of road knowledge from riding one of those for a while and doing thousands of miles. Um, so when you come to do your car test, if you do that at 17, you've already got a huge bank of road knowledge, which is absolutely invaluable. Um, but once you've done your CBT at 16, you can then at 17 ride a 125cc motorcycle, which is no more than 11 kilowatts horsepower kilowatts horsepower which is about 14.8 brake horsepower if I remember correctly um, so I didn't bother getting a 125 because the difference wasn't huge um, and at 17 you're better off um, just de-restricting your 50cc and then it's about the same as a 125 so that's what I did because mine was a two-stroke um, little enduro bike so once I de-restricted it it kept up with 125 so that was that was good and I think you should be allowed to have a 125 from 60, 16 years old I think that would be safer but there we go um, so that CBT is um, basically a certificate so you do a training course you go in and out of some cones on a training day in a car park do some figures of eights learn bike control um, and then you go out on the road and for a couple of hours and they see if you're roadworthy, teach you the tricks of the road. Um, and that lasts for two years. So if you don't then move on to the next license, after two years, you have to retake your CBT if you want to continue riding your 125 or 50cc. Or when you get to 19 years old and do your A2, you'll have to do it again as well. So let's go on to the next level. If you are starting out in your riding journey and you are thinking about doing your CBT and you're wondering what it fully entails, then I did actually cover a video showing everything in a CBT a couple of years ago. So I'll leave that in the link in the description so you can check that out and see what it's like. Uh, but the next thing you can do after CBT is called the AM license, which is at 16 years old as well. Um, now this is a completely pointless license, absolute waste of time, so don't waste your time or money doing this license. All it allows you to do is, um, you'll have to do a, a proper test and it will give you a full license, but you'll still only be able to like, ride a 50cc and all it allows you to do is take the L plates off and carry a pillion. So don't waste your time. 
Um, and then at 17 years old, you can do the A1 license, which is the same again, but allows you to ride a 125 without, with a pillion and without L plates. So again, don't bother doing that. Most people don't, it's a complete waste of time. And then you have to wait two years until you're 19, and then you can do your A2 license. So most people like myself, get a car at 17, wait for two years, then do your A2 license at 19, uh, which is what I did, and I'll explain that for you now. years old or between 19 and 24 you can go and do your A2 license um, so the A2 test has to be done on a bike that is no less than 395 cc which I believe they're bringing down to 245 cc but I'm not sure they've done that yet so if you do know let me know in the comment section below um, the test entails of a theory test which is similar to the car theory test but a little bit more difficult um, so you've got to practice for that and obviously pay for the test. And then you've got a two-part practical test. So you've got the Mod 1, which is based in a, a large car park. You've got a um, set of cones. You've got to do a U-turn. You've got to do um, some manoeuvres off the bike. You've got to do figures of eight. You've got to do some tests going through a speed trap and doing an emergency stop and doing a swerve test. There's all sorts of bits in that test. And then you've got your Mod 2, which is the on the road test. So that's when you go out with an instructor and they follow you behind. They're giving you instructions through an earpiece. Um, and it's like you're going out for a ride, but they're watching your every move. You've got to make sure you do everything right. So once you've done that, they will give you your A2 license as long as you pass. Um, and then you can ride a bike which is no more than 35 kilowatts or 47 brake horsepower. Um, so there's no CC restriction, it's just a horsepower restriction. And there's also a power to rate ratio restrictions, which is 0.2 kilowatts per kilogram. So you can't go ahead and buy a motocross bike, um, which has about 42 horsepower, something like that, um, which weighs absolutely nothing because the power to weight ratio is through the roof. So you can't go and do that, which I wanted to do, but I didn't. But you can go ahead and get a bigger bike like this and restrict it, which is, of course, what I have done. Um, and there are other bikes on the market, like Triumphs, that you can do this to as well. Or you could get an A2 ready bike um, that's already under 47 horsepower. bad. Oh, that's a nasty eye. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh no, and off they all go. <laughs> Once you've had your A2 license for a minimum of two years, you can then do your A license, which is a fully unrestricted license, the final step in the ladder. Um, or you can do this license at 24 if you haven't done any of the previous steps, which is what we call a direct access course. Um, now that would entail doing your CBT, then doing a theory test, then doing the full test, and that means you can ride anything you like. So most people 
skip all the steps below, then go out at 24 years old and ride what they like. Now this is kind of killing the government's point because the point was to step it up so that people are safer and they're not going out and buying a Honda Fireblaze straight away and killing themselves, which is what a lot of people used to do. Um, but people like myself who want to ride bikes like these and don't want to go absolutely crazy are then kicked in the foot because we can't do that. We have to jump through the ladder and pay a lot of money, um, which puts a lot of people off, um, especially young people who, um, you know, can't afford to do these tests again and again and buy a motorcycle they've got to wait um, but if you are an older rider anyway and you're you know in your 40s 50s 60s even 70s and you're you've never ridden a bike and you're thinking of riding then it's great because you can then just do your full license um, but anyway at 21 which is what I'm doing I'm now 21 um, I can do my full license as well and because I've already done my A2 license I won't have to do a theory test again um, I'll just have to do my Mod 1 and my Mod 2 again, uh, the same test I've already done two years ago because I have completely forgotten how to ride a motorbike. I don't remember. Um, who knows how to do it. So I'm going to have to learn again um, because I'm back at stage one. So after two years, motorcyclists, uh, we're very forgetful, you see. So every two years, um, we forget how to ride. So that's why if you do a CBT, it runs out after two years. We've forgotten how to ride. And then if you've done your A2, runs out after two years because that's the typical amount of time it takes for us to lose our memory um, so yeah we have to do it again um, now this test has to be done on a bike that's a minimum 595 cc um, and 50 kilowatts which is 68 horsepower Hopefully that has helped you understand the UK licensing laws. Um, we did do a video on this back in 2021, but I wanted to come back to the subject as I am now doing my test again for my A license. So I thought it'd be a good time to do a refresher and make uh, maybe a more up-to-date video about it. I don't think much cha has changed, um, but I thought it'd be worth doing. Um, so make sure if you're new to the channel, leave us a like, subscribe. We review all sorts of motorbikes. We do motorcycle topics. Um, and check out our previous videos. We've done hundreds on all sorts of bikes and there's loads more to come so you don't want to miss out.